Brett Rivers here, San Francisco Running Company for Ultra Running Magazine, joined by Tony Post, the founder of Topo Athletic. Uh, they are, how old are you guys now, five years? No, we're just a couple years old. We've okay. been in the market a little over two years. Okay, cool. You guys have really, um, um, uh, I'd say, progressed the line. Um, I think you guys are, are, are growing at a pretty good clip now. We now have you in the store. Um, we brought in uh, your new lightweight trail shoe, the MT2. Um, eight and a half ounces in the men's nine, so real lightweight, some good flex. Um, what you guys are really doing design-wise is, is still a, a good tight fit in the heel and the instep, but doing much more of an anatomical, slightly wider toe box, really how the foot's actually shaped. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really one of the unique things about the MT2 is that uh, I like to have a roomy toe box so your yeah. toes can spread and splay, but a lot of times in a shoe like that, you have a shoe that fits a little sloppy in the back. You know, you don't have the level of security. To feel fast and nimble, I think you still need to feel really connected in the back half and through the waist in the Definitely. shoe. So I like that sensation, that good, you know, tight security through here, but lots of room up front so your toes can splay and you can use them for balance and agility and a better sense of control. Yeah, I was blown away by how light this is. Um, you still have great trail tread, can handle a couple miles of road, no problem, but, um, you know, really good grip underfoot. Um, but it was really, to me, like, kind of how light this was. For, yeah. Especially the level of cushioning, 23 millimeters in the heel, 20 in the forefoot. So you're doing a little bit of an offset, three millimeters, three but millimeter you're not one. completely stuck into a zero drop, and you're right. not building, you know, also not traditional shoes in the 12 millimeters. That's right. Range. Everything for us is really between that zero and five millimeters. That's where we yep. put everything. So this kind of falls in the middle of that as a three millimeter offset. Cool. And you guys have a, a full range of shoes. I'm um, kind of at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. You have something definitely more protective. Yeah. So this is a this is a shoe. So the one we were looking at was the MT2. This is a shoe called the Hydra Venture. It has some similar characteristics. So again, same kind of platform, 2320. But in this case, you can see inside here, you can see uh, the, that it's got a rock plate actually molded into the midsole. The rock plate itself, sorry to slide out of frame yeah, there. This is really cool. The rock plate itself uh, has a flex groove here, molded uh, TPU-like material through here. So you don't have rocks or roots x-raying up through the sole. We open it up in the midfoot so you have a little bit of torsional flex so it doesn't force you to roll an ankle or, or twist. It doesn't add a whole lot of weight. This shoe still comes in at about nine ounces. Wow. One of the key characteristics in this shoe, this is a waterproof shoe. We use a vent waterproof uh, membrane here. The membrane is actually laminated directly to the mesh. So unlike, you know, some waterproof shoes, you'd build a full booty. Yep and you cement that booty to the upper, it can make it a little hard. Well, in this case, the upper is actually quite supple and soft, so it allows the foot to still move and work in a natural way, cool. and it also makes the shoe lighter. So again, coming in at just barely over nine ounces in this shoe, for a shoe that has a rock plate, waterproof technology, um, with those same fit characteristics you described in the, in the MT. So uh, this shoe comes in at $100, suggested retail, 130 on the on the waterproof. Yeah, and that's what I was also surprised with was the um, the price point is so competitive. hundred dollars for the yeah. MT2. I think like in our store, I think that's going to be one of our least expensive shoes, and but also probably the best value in terms of probably expected life of the shoe to, yeah. to dollar out the door. So. I, I hope so. You know, I think there are ways that you can make shoes and deliver a great value without always having to have. You know, some shoes require higher price points sure. because there's so much there, but. I think that our, our responsibility is to make sure we deliver a variety of price points and that you always have a shoe that's an entry level shoe that helps people get into the sport and then as they progress, you know, then they can work their way up the ladder. Enjoy running. Thanks. Thanks right. a lot, Brad.